When people talk about Donna Douglas, they remember her as the tomboy Ellie Mae Clampett in the 1960s show The Beverly Hillbillies. However, what a lot of people don't know is that long before she became famous, she was a real-life Ellie Mae. From her early years in rural areas in Louisiana to her glamorous life as a Hollywood star, Donna Douglas went from grass to grace. Even years after her tragic demise, her story is still worth telling. Being Doris Smith The person the world came to know as Donna Douglas actually grew up as Doris Smith in Pride, Louisiana. Her family was not well-to-do, but her childhood was filled with all kinds of adventures. She may not have been able to afford all the luxuries of life, but she was happy and content with the life she had. Interestingly, she didn't grow up wearing dresses and having tea parties. She was raised as a tomboy, and the fact that she had an older brother and several male cousins around her made it difficult for her to be girly. According to Donna, her early years were far from boring. She practically grew up swinging from one vine to another and keeping herself busy. She was not a conventional girl. Growing up in a rural setting, she embraced the outdoors and enjoyed activities like fishing and hunting. Her adventurous spirit was nurtured by the rural environment she called home. However, after a while, she picked up an interest in pageantry and she sure had the looks to back her interest up. Initially, she participated in the pageantry for fun and because she genuinely enjoyed being in the spotlight, but as time passed by, she realized that she could achieve even more. It was as though contesting in the pageants opened her eyes to what she was capable of, and before she knew it, Hollywood's doors swung open for her to walk in. Donna's involvement in beauty pageants played a pivotal role in her journey to acting. She participated in local pageants during her teenage years, and even won the title of Miss Baton Rouge in 1957. This success led her to compete in the Miss New Orleans pageant where she was named first runner-up. Although she wasn't familiar with show business, participating in and winning pageants made her desire a career in the spotlight. She wanted more for herself, and she was ready to relocate to New York to pursue a career. But there was only one problem. She had never been on an airplane. Finding Success in Hollywood when Donna Douglas decided to pursue a career in Hollywood, she had no idea what was waiting on the other side for her. Sure, she was excited about the new chapter of her life, but making it in Hollywood wasn't exactly as easy as she hoped. Donna spent her first few months in Hollywood figuring out what she could offer to the industry. She knew for a fact that she had the looks, and it wasn't long before she started getting opportunities. She reportedly worked as an illustration model for toothpaste advertisements for a short period, but soon enough she realized that she didn't want to be a model. According to her, the idea of losing a lot of weight and being skinny in order to qualify as a model didn't appeal to her. But soon after, she found something that caught her interest. Television. Her very first appearance on a TV show in 1957 turned out to be an exciting experience for Donna. She was featured as the letters girl on The Perry Como Show, and that was the beginning of Donna's career on screens. It didn't take long for people to notice how bright her personality was. With looks and a personality like hers, she was bound to become a huge success in Hollywood. In the following months and years, Donna brightened screens with her magnetic presence on shows like The Steve Allen Show and The Phil Silvers Show. Donna was no ordinary entertainer, and within months of gracing TV screens, New York photographers and reporters deemed it fit to award her with the Miss By Line crown, which she wore proudly on shows like The Ed Sullivan Show. Donna Douglas stood out in the early years of her career for her wholesome charm, beauty, and comedic talent. Her fans could not get enough of she started getting roles in films and prominent TV shows. In 1959, she snagged a dazzling featured role in the film Career, but that's not all. She also made a memorable appearance in the toe-tapping musical Leal Abner. Fast forward to 1961, and our leading lady found herself in a different kind of spotlight. She played Tony Randall's trusty secretary in the romantic comedy Lover Come Back, where Rock Hudson and Doris Day brought their irresistible charm to the screen. And just when you thought her Hollywood journey couldn't get any more intriguing, she crossed paths with none other than the king of rock and roll himself, Elvis Presley in the 1966 flick Frankie and Johnny. All through the late 1950s and 1960s, she built her career through authenticity and a southern charm that could not be missed. 
After her interesting role in The Twilight Zone and her portrayal of Barbara Simmons in Checkmate, she was ready to take on more challenging and memorable roles. So, when the casting process for the series The Beverly Hillbillies began, she knew that the character Ellie Mae would be perfect for her. She was willing to work hard, ace her audition, and do everything morally right to get the role. The Audition That Changed Her Life There is no doubt that Donna Douglas is famously known and remembered for her role as Ellie Mae in the then-popular show The Beverly Hillbillies, but not many people know the part where she competed with hundreds of other girls for the role and milked a goat to show that she was a good fit for it. Over 500 girls auditioned for the role of Ellie Mae. Most of them seemed like good fits, but among them was Donna Douglas, who stood out for one major reason. The character, Ellie Mae, was practically who Donna Douglas was while growing up, a poor southern tomboy. It was easy for Donna Douglas to take on the role of Ellie Mae because, in many ways, she was just like the character. There was a part of the audition that was challenging for most of the candidates. They were asked to milk a goat. However, for Donna Douglas, it was not difficult at all because she had grown up milking cows in Pride, Louisiana. In a 2008 interview, she explained how she figured out how to ace her task during the audition, saying, I had milked cows before, I figured they were equipped the same, so I just went on over and did it. It was clear that Donna Douglas was the best fit for the role, and as soon as the show aired, she became the center of attraction, famously called the fairest Beverly Hillbilly. She certainly made the show even more interesting. The show was about Ellie Mae's family, the Clampets, adjusting to their new upscale surroundings and the hilarious situations that arose from their rural ways, clashing with the Beverly Hills lifestyle. It was a good-natured comedy that reminded fans that no matter where they come from, family and a good sense of humor can get them through just about anything. The Beverly Hillbillies became one of the most loved shows in the 60s, and Donna Douglas certainly made the show brighter. For her, playing Ellie Mae was more than just taking on another character. It was reconnecting with her younger self and experiencing the parts of rural life that she missed. Why Donna Douglas is Unforgettable It's been decades since the last episode of the show was aired, but for some reason, some people still can't get over Donna Douglas's role. Makes you wonder why, doesn't it? Well, let's just say her character as Ellie Mae made TV viewers fall in love with her. As a bubbly, wholesome, and downright enchanting country girl with long, flowing locks and a wardrobe that would make any fashionista's jaw drop. Ellie Mae wasn't just a character, she was a breath of fresh hillbilly air in the upscale Beverly Hills. What did people like about her? Well, everything. Donna Douglas's character, Ellie Mae, wasn't just a pretty face. She was as strong as a bull, and that wasn't just due to her country upbringing. She could wrestle gators with the best of them and haul around hay bales like it was child's play. Her physical prowess made her a standout character on the show. What truly made Donna Douglas unforgettable on the show was her innocence and purity in the midst of the extravagance and snobbery of Beverly Hills. She was the epitome of kindness and sincerity, often baffled by the high society ways of her new surroundings. Ellie Mae's naivety also led to some of the show's most humorous moments. Her attempts at fitting in with the Beverly Hills crowd were nothing short of hilarious. Her simple, straightforward way of thinking clashed wonderfully with the sophistication of her new neighbors. When you remember Ellie Mae Clampett, you think of a character who brought laughter, warmth, and a touch of country charm to millions of viewers. Donna Douglas's portrayal of her was nothing short of magical. She gave life to a character who embodied the beauty of simplicity and the values of family and friendship. Donna Douglas stood out on the show not just because of her beauty, but because of her genuine heart and her ability to make us laugh. In a 2003 interview with Confessions of a Pop Culture Addict, Donna Douglas expressed how the role changed her life, saying, Ellie Mae was like a slice out of my life. She is a wonderful little door opener for me because people love her and they love the hillbillies. Even to this day, it's shown every day somewhere. But as with any abilities, she may open a door for you, but you have to have substance or integrity to advance you through that door. Playing the role of Ellie Mae certainly opened doors for her, but shortly after, Hollywood shut her out. The unfortunate end of her career in Hollywood. 
As a result of the success of the Beverly Hillbillies, Donna got even more famous, but she certainly didn't anticipate the career problems that emanated from taking on this role. Playing Ellie Mae was like a blessing and a curse. On one hand, Donna became popular for the role and got some opportunities as a result of it, but on the other hand, she started having typecasting issues. She struggled to get roles that allowed her to be versatile and creative. In the eyes of many producers, she was only fit to play a character similar to Ellie Mae. One would have thought that Hollywood would be knocking down her door after her beloved role, but life can be mighty unpredictable in Hollywood. After the show wrapped up in 1971, Donna had a tough time finding substantial roles that could match the success of her Ellie Mae character. You see, sometimes when an actor becomes so closely associated with one iconic role, it can be a real challenge to break out of that mold. Donna tried her hand at a few different projects, including TV appearances, but none of these quite captured the magic of her time as Ellie Mae. She faced another hurdle when she became involved in a legal battle over the use of her likeness in Beverly Hillbillies merchandise. This legal tussle tied her up for a good while and added to the challenges she faced in her career. But you know what? Despite the struggles, Donna Douglas remained a gracious and beloved figure in the entertainment industry. She embraced her status as Ellie Mae and continued to make appearances at fan conventions and events where fans could meet their favorite TV hillbilly in person. When Donna realized that her career in Hollywood was over, she took a step back from acting and decided to focus on other passions. Pursuing Other Passions Donna Douglas, the darling of Hollywood's golden era, embarked on a remarkable journey after her light in Hollywood dimmed. While many stars may have faded into obscurity, Donna chose to shine her light in a variety of intriguing and meaningful endeavors. First and foremost, Donna's deep faith guided her post-Hollywood life. She was a devout Christian and shared her spiritual journey through speaking engagements. Not many people know this, but Donna's talents extended far beyond her acting career. She was a gifted gospel singer who used her voice to inspire and uplift. Whether performing at churches or recording gospel songs, her music touched the hearts of many. Her songs were a reflection of her deep connection to her faith and her desire to share messages of hope. Even though she never became a popular gospel singer, her voice brought peace to several people who were going through trials. In addition to her diverse talents and pursuits, Donna Douglas also ventured into the world of real estate. This unexpected career move showcased her versatility and her ability to excel in various fields. During her time in Hollywood, Donna reportedly invested wisely in real estate properties. She was said to have a keen eye for valuable real estate opportunities, and her investments proved to be quite lucrative. She used her earnings from her acting career to acquire and manage properties, primarily in and around the Baton Rouge area of Louisiana. Donna's success in real estate wasn't just about financial gain. It was proof of her business acumen and her knack for making wise investments. She demonstrated that she was not only a talented actress and singer, but also a savvy entrepreneur who could navigate the complex world of property ownership. Donna Douglas, with her gentle southern charm and unwavering faith, also used her voice as an inspirational speaker to uplift and inspire others. Beyond her iconic Hollywood persona, she had a profound impact on audiences by sharing her life experiences and her deeply held beliefs. As an inspirational speaker, Donna often spoke at churches, community events, and gatherings, captivating her audience with her heartfelt words. Her talks were not just about fame and fortune, but about the values that truly mattered to her. She shared stories of her journey, from growing up in rural Louisiana to her time in Hollywood, and how her faith guided her through the highs and lows of life. What made Donna's inspirational speeches so compelling was her authenticity. She didn't just preach, she shared her own struggles and vulnerabilities, making her relatable to her audience. Her sincerity and genuine belief in the power of faith resonated deeply with those who had the privilege of hearing her speak. Yet, beyond her creative pursuits, Donna was a woman with a big heart. She dedicated herself to philanthropy, mainly causes related to children and education. She had a deep love for children, and in her final years on Earth, she decided to spend her time catering to the people she loved the most children. She found purpose. When it looked like Hollywood had forgotten all about her, Donna Douglas was doing things that made her heart smile. 
In the early 1980s, Donna Douglas embarked on a new chapter in her life that would reveal the genuine passion burning within her. It was a journey that took her far from the glamour of Hollywood and into the heart of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Sometimes the most meaningful journeys begin in unexpected places. In 1982, she made a life-altering decision by enrolling at the Rima Bible Training Center. This wasn't a decision driven by fame or fortune. It was born out of a deep-seated desire to make a difference in the lives of children. Donna's choice to pursue this path was a testament to her faith and her commitment to a purpose greater than herself. Sure, she had a good run in Hollywood, but within the recesses of her heart, she believed it was time to give back in a way and impact the lives of children. Over the course of two years, Donna immersed herself in her studies, focusing on children's ministry. Her dedication was unmatched, and in 1984, she proudly graduated from Rima with an emphasis on this particular field. After graduation, she took her newfound knowledge, combined it with her innate charisma, and embarked on a mission to touch the lives of children in a profound way. Her passion for children's ministry wasn't superficial. It was a genuine calling that radiated from her. She became a beacon of love, faith, and inspiration for countless young hearts. Through her ministry, she was able to touch the lives of many children in a way that they will never forget. Some people were surprised about the fact that the actress chose to live a private and quiet life after leaving Hollywood, but she had her reasons. Even while she was famous, she strayed far away from the prying eyes and the paparazzi, living a drama-free life. It was a world where headlines were dominated by scandalous love affairs, tumultuous marriages, and wild parties. There was one shining star who managed to live a drama-free life, and her name was Donna Douglas. And even after she retired, she chose to stay away from the chaos. When it came to her private life, there was little to no scandal for the media outlets to feed on. All that people knew was that she was married twice and had one son. Donna's journey into matrimony began in 1951 when she said I do to Roland Bourgeois Jr. In Hollywood where marriages were like shooting stars, bright but fleeting Donna aimed for something more lasting. Together, they welcomed their bundle of joy, Danny Bourgeois, into the world in 1954. Parenthood became her starring role off screen. But as Hollywood often teaches us, not all stories have a fairy tale ending. The same year that brought the joy of motherhood also brought the end of her first marriage. The divorce papers were signed, and Donna had to navigate the rough seas of single parenthood in Hollywood. It was a challenging role, but one she took on with grace and determination. Now, fast forward to 1971, where the curtains of love reopened as she walked down the aisle once more. This time, it was with Robert M. Leeds, the director of The Beverly Hillbillies. However, Donna's second marriage also had its final act, closing in 1980. Even when her years on earth were coming to an end, Donna's life was a reminder that not all Hollywood stars are cut from the same cloth. Some, like Donna Douglas, choose to write their own script, one that's filled with love, resilience, and a touch of simplicity. Sadly, Donna Douglas found herself battling a deadly ailment in 2014, one that would eventually end the former actress's life, her tragic demise. It was in the quiet Baton Rouge suburb Zachary that Donna spent her last days. In the midst of the serene streets and peaceful surroundings, she was waging a courageous battle against a relentless foe, but a lot of her fans didn't know what she was going through. Pancreatic cancer, notorious for its stealth and resilience, had found its way into Donna's life. It was a diagnosis that changed everything. She fought valiantly, showing the same determination that had made her a beloved figure in Hollywood. But cancer, as we know, can be a relentless antagonist, and this was one battle that even Donna's resilience couldn't win. As the days turned into months, hope and despair played their roles in this real-life drama. Friends, family, and fans sent their well wishes, praying for a miracle. Donna's son, Danny Bourgeois, stood by her side, a pillar of strength, while her brother, Emmett R. Smith Jr., offered his support. Two granddaughters, a grandson, and two great-grandchildren watched as their matriarch faced the storm, embodying the true essence of family love and unity. She was said to have been surrounded by loved ones as she fought valiantly for her life. But unfortunately, death soon came knocking. 
On the 1st of January, in the quiet of a hospital room, the final chapter was written. Donna Douglas, the actress who had charmed audiences with her role as Ellie Mae Clampett, took her last breath. The news of her death rocked the industry and sent people down memory lane as they remembered her roles on screens. People who knew her personally only had good things to say about her, and it was clear that she touched many lives in her lifetime. Linda Ronstadt also lived an interesting and unconventional life. These facts about her will leave you shocked.